we are focusing on uh, uh, seed issues of uh, uh, major crops and then uh, we went on to pulses uh, we discussed vegetables in the last session on the 3rd of uh, november and today uh, the focus would be on edible oil seed crops uh, we have with us uh, our partners from uh, china courtesy dr gu wen liang the commissioner and the chinese embassy uh, in islamabad uh, we also have with us uh, uh, industry representation amar mirza saab and we just uh, received syngenta representative uh, this is uh, as usual a very uh, interesting session uh, in the making uh, i would like to have it begun by an introductory presentation by professor hafiz sadaqat professor hafiz sadaqat is plant breeder uh, and he has to his credit uh, a newly developed uh, uh, brassica variety i don't know what you call want to call it it's uh, sarso artoria or canola i don't know but uh, uh, as a common observer i found it very interesting because it's determinate short duration and uh, very high yielding the variety has been firmly proved by uh, the system in the country uh, the provincial uh, uh, seed council so uh, dr fees has done uh, a wonderful uh, uh, job and uh, a major contribution in terms of uh, getting a newly uh, uh, evolved variety registered as an approved variety so uh, dr fees sadaqat uh, please get it started you have to share your screen please unmute unmute yourself and share your screen you are you are still on mute unmute yourself Also, are you listening? We are seeing you in action. Please open your mic, or first share. Carry up on your screen. Niche se green buttons. Mic to khol le na, taaki hum aapko sun sake. साहब आपका माइक अभी तक बंद है ओके वाइल यू लर्न ओके स्विच टू डॉक्टर बुटर खुल गया आप मैंने कर ओके तो फिर आप अपनी स्क्रीन शेयर करें ना स्क्रीन शेयर करें okay if you cannot okay yeah it's coming please open it yeah okay go ahead sir ho gaya sir ha aap shuru kare na aage aap slide leke aaye na professional slide jo aapki hai aap shuru kare yes okay please go ahead bismillah rahman rahim well this is really as sensitive as the previous slides had been our uh, this episode is uh, about ic crop and uh, very very sensitive issue it is very sensitive issue in the sense that uh, we we are uh, acutely shorted deficit of edible oil we require 3.255 million tons as is given over here and we produce only from all sources 0.507 million tons which means that uh, almost 70% more than 70% we are importing 
and importing it uh, while spending more than 300 321 billion rupees which is a huge amount and very heavy burden on the national exchequer this is uh, realized by the government of pakistan government uh, has uh, launched uh, a national oil seed enhancement program also of, of uh, worth 10.964 billion rupees but still is a meager amount and we need some more well uh, i'll be talking uh, uh, in terms of pkr but uh, one, one can continue if, if we wants to, to convert them yesterday's rate was 160.70 pkr so we have uh, many crops uh, by virtue of our seasons and uh, location in the world we have grape seed and mustard canola as well as non canola version sunflower groundnut sesame linseed olive palm oil coconut etc etc some of them are under some of them are under trials and some of them are are very much okay farmers know their crop history farmers uh, are growing from century and uh, they, they 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 are producing it as as a potential high seed crop sir what i am i'm concerned is that uh, our all sources could produce only 0.57 million tons of viable oil whereas we we require 3. Point, no more than 3 million tons well if we if we look uh, on on its scenario we we can see that uh, 66% or 70% uh, our edible oil is coming from cotton seed grape seed and mustards uh, are contributing 20% while sunflower is contributing 11% canola is uh, is has a very, very low percentage but still it is good now going going up all the times now if we go through its history it's 3% grape seed and mustards and canola and sunflower let us see they are the major contributors the rest of the crops uh, sesame groundnut sunflower are, uh, are uh, even even all a palm oil coconut in seed that they have their major contributions and still groundnut sesame although have uh, high percentage of oil contents in it still they they, they have never been used for oil extraction they are used for seed therefore specifically i will talk on the seed of of grape seed and mustard we will take uh, canola as well as non canola version for later in sunflower and after cotton seed this is uh, a, a, a a portfolio of uh, its cultivation cotton seed uh, is is grown on 5864000 acre while grape seed uh, 586 and uh, sunflower is in canola we need uh, we, 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 if we if we have a look on it we, we can clearly see that uh, although although some area improvement is there from 1890 to 2018 to 2019 crop season to 2019 and 20 crop season area is increasing but still the yield is, is is not increasing there are some reasons also I will talk on ripe seed and mustards. The area is increasing, the yield is increasing, the high contribution is increasing. Sunflower is getting down, canola is getting up and, and going up. And this is really a result of uh, what, what the government has realized it and the government is, is promoting it. We, we, the, the last years, three, four years, or three, five years, we have very com aggressive and uh, comprehensive. A, a, a pull on it, a push on it that uh, it must be promoted all the time. So for this uh, much area, we, what what the government is is planning eight thirty thousand hectares of oil seeds. We need uh, total seed requirements ten thousand and seven hundred ninety. Whereas uh, we are producing three hundred and fifty six uh, metric tons only. And uh, whereas private companies are producing 429, imported is 755 metric tons. 
and uh, it is total public private imported 1540 and the best of the steel is this i don't know from where it has come down and this is a question with which we may be discussed in, 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 in the with the discussion i'll talk about uh, um, some major actors in seed supply chain well uh, although it, it, there is a legal legal cover see that 19 up to the, um, 1976 and 19 and then later uh, amendments we we have uh, a very good uh, national seed council with with that uh, fs uh, rc federal seed Action committee and the at evaluation committee and uh, we have uh, provincial seed councils psc sfc kpjsc and uh, bsc PSC is uh, very active, and the rest of them, them are in, in a resting stage, really. I don't know. Federal Seed Certification and Registration Department, PARC, PCC, PCC is for, for cotton purposes, and the local private seed companies, international seed companies, uh, farmers, quality enhancers, and maintainers, and seed analysis, seed inspector. The registration of user the testing laboratories. We have all these infrastructures working very, very well. Well, it starts uh, from the development uh, of, of the variety, a genetics, breeding and genetics. So maybe starting from crossing of the two parents' parental lines who have selected for, for very good reasons, selection through generation, and uh, then giving its genetic purity through, through passive segregating generation, working for its workable homozygosity, micro yield drives, micro yield drives, and, and further evaluation for quality and, and other things. All these things, uh, when, when, when one is completed, uh, will go towards the Punjab Seed Council for spot examination, and then recommendations of the Sub-Expert Committee and approval of in, in the meanwhile, uh, uh, genetics is also uh, evaluated by DAS. DAS is uh, Synthry Test, Uniformity and Stability Test. Is, and uh, we, we also go for the ECU and then by back, uh, and then registration by national seed company. And once it is right, it is approved. Then and Different classes uh, which we have uh, in Pakistan although it is this uh, Pakistan based breeders nucleus seed uh, which, which is uh, golden yellow tag and the pre basic seed which is the progeny of the uh, breeders uh, nucleus seed it has white tag with violet uh, line across diagonally basic seed progeny of the pre basic seed and then finally certified the volume volume is, is very well given by the by the triangle, a, a small part, very, very small part, PN seed, a little higher volume of pre-basic and then basic and then certified seed. This is what, what we are doing in Pakistan. Seed multiplication in, in local, uh, in public sectors and in local sectors, local, I mean, private sectors and some of the farmers, they also do their own seeds. Well, uh, taking them one by one, public uh, sectors uh, multiply seeds uh, as, as PSC is uh, one of them. <clears throat> PSC um, takes uh, pre basic seed from, from the breeders uh, and then uh, produce basic seed by own for own purposes and uh, for, for the private companies. Private companies, they, they take seed, basic seed from from PSC. PSC through foundation seed cell has developed the mechanisms to produce BNF, pre basic, basic, and certified seeds. Foundation seed cell, cell works closely with the breeder and FSC and RD for the purity of the seed. Seed is produced at PSC farm as well as through registered farmers, which, which, uh, which are through Punjab. The system consists of as we already have said that seed analysis, seed inspectors, and seed, seed uh, certificate of 
private companies uh, uh, they, they are round about 600 uh, currently they may be more or less seed company acquires basic or pre basic seed from public company that is bsc companies multiply seed and uh, claim grade in, in three pack and, and uh, market it uh, through their own network and processing seed is prepared under watch and ward of fsc and rd network which, which has a good control on it international seed companies can import evaluate through by adaptability adaptability trials are done by by prc if a private company is interested to import seed from abroad that that can and uh, that, that seed will be evaluated for quarantine purposes and for other purposes uh, by the prc and uh, if allowed uh, by, by the prc first then that 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 will be that will be imported otherwise importing is not done the market certified seed farmers so then afterward Sir, uh, this is uh, a, a slide uh, which is the admission, and uh, I, I, I beg you permission for for presentation of um, from Dr. Kar. Modernizing oil seed farming. This is a courtesy of uh, Farm Direct. I have been there when 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 this was being done over there. A very good seed planter imported the drill, which is not monosome, which is from from France. And the sowing was done on, on 30th of uh, this. And the uh, next slide uh, is this, uh, under the irrigation permit. Irrigation is through, through the sprinkler irrigation, which is a huge structure and uh, a, a very good mechanism, very good, efficient mechanism for, for, for irrigation purposes, for saving water. And it germinated very quickly. Well, uh, this is uh, a, a slide uh, where we can see number of seeds are placed over here in a row. And uh, this is what it is equal to, a per CNN in, in seed replacement. This is uh, germination as it is. And uh, what I want to con convey is that uh, only with uh, half kg seed you can have uh, more than one lakh plantation, and uh, and uh, we are using nowadays two and a half, two to two and a half kg per per hectare, and this is uh, a, a big difference. I think this is a, a marvelous achievement, and uh, if our farmers go towards this side, this this will this will modernize our IC farming, and uh, we will be able to get a, 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 a bridging for, uh, for, for, for our needs and our production. Thank you very much, Darsa, for the, for the time given to me. Dr. Krasa. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Afi Sadaqat. Uh, very good start. Uh, Dr. Butter, uh, we would like to hear from you, your field observations, and particularly, uh, Vee Sadaka said that we have a trend of uh, uh, canola or mustards in Rabi, which is definitely at the cost of wheat acreage, and now that wheat has become a hot commodity, what do you see in future <laughs> you, canola acreage, and uh, uh, if we will be seeing a squeeze on canola again, and uh, uh, acreage diverted back to wheat again? So your general general overview of oil seed crops and then canola versus wheat in particular. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is uh, I'm sorry that I'm traveling to Multan for a seminar, and there must may be the interruption problem. But uh, starting from the oil seed system, at the moment uh, we are importing 3.7 million ton of uh, edible oil or oil seed for crushing. And out of 3.7 million ton, only 700,000 ton in the shape of edible oil seeds. Whereas 3 million ton is palm oil. Palm oil is over 97% over of the edible oil we are importing. The local contribution, as Dr. Fee said, is very minimal, is 500,000 ton. 
whereas if we compare the local seed we are producing oil edible oil seed we are producing in the shape of uh, canola are in the shape of sunflower this is a, against the against the import is not uh, uh, so discouraging because if we see that we are importing 300000 ton of uh, canola a uh, uh, rape seed and mustard 164000 ton if you see that if we are trying to replace ji bhutto sahab we have lost you can you hear me dr bhutto we are not hearing you ji bhutto sahab well you know as dr bhutto is traveling there could be uh, internet connectivity issue on the road uh, so we move on and uh, uh, we will uh, get back dr butter uh, you know towards the end again now i will request uh, our guest from china professor hu qing uh, who is professor of oil seed crops in chinese academy of agriculture sciences professor professor hu qing Yes. Yes, I'm here. Welcome, and please get started. You can share okay. your screen. Okay. Can Can you hear me? Yes, very clear. Okay. All right. Your. Yeah. your screen is visible please go ahead yeah okay thank you uh good evening everybody i'm uh, very happy to join this uh, uh, video meeting i am a breeder in the uh, oil crops crops research institute of chinese academy of agriculture sciences and uh, I will talk about something on production and breeding of oilseed crops in China. The content of my talk will include the four parts. Uh, uh, I will talk about production and breeding. Also, I will uh, give some brief introduction of our uh, institute. then uh, some research activities of uh, my group uh, the production of oilseed in china uh, is like that we have uh, oilseed crops uh, several types uh, like uh, uh, rape seed which brassica napoles is uh, the major ones also some parts Uh, grow compostures and the jonsil they are count uh, um, quite a small part and soybean uh, peanut sesame some uh, sunflower linseed and uh, also some uh, other like a cotton seed oil or rice uh, bran oil uh, corn gem uh, oil and the cast bean camelina perilla these are not the major uh, oil crops so uh, the planting in situation of oil crops from say, uh, 2009 to uh, to 2018 is uh, excluding soybean because we uh, uh, A soybean is mainly uh, grown as uh, as food uh, crop, so this data didn't uh, uh, doesn't include soy soybean. To the production, 
uh, of the oil crops from uh, this ten, ten, last 10 years, like the uh, area of uh, production and yield from this uh, table, we can see area doesn't uh, increase, but the, the production is uh, a little bit increased. But the uh, uh, yield of uh, average, average yield uh, increased uh, quite uh, uh, significantly. And for soybean production, uh, the area actually is uh, fluctuating. Uh, uh, production uh, is also like uh, uh, from uh, from 2009 to 2018. It's uh, almost. Uh, the, the middle of, of the years uh, uh, decreased, but uh, uh, lately it's uh, uh, maintained uh, the level and then the yield is uh, uh, increasing. Also for, for rapeseed production, uh, it's almost the same, uh, except uh, uh, yield uh, which is increasing, the area and the production is uh, uh, more or less the same uh, for the last uh, uh, 10 years. Peanut uh, production is increasing, uh, increasing uh, and uh, also in terms of production and yield. But the consumption in, uh, of oil, uh, uh, edible plant edible oil is increasing uh, per capita. Uh, like 20 ki uh, kilogram per year per, per person, which is two times higher than recommended. And the uh, domestic supply uh, only account for uh, Thirty percent, which means uh, we are highly dependent on overseas uh, supply. Hundred percent of rapes, rapeseed uh, uh, are used for uh, for edible oil, but uh, for peanut, uh, only half uh, for crushing oil. Uh, for soybean, only only ten percent. Also for sesame, uh, it's maybe only half uh, for crushing oil, the, the rest uh, for uh, food. And the variety development, like a, a soybean, uh, besides uh, uh, for every uh, oil seed crop, the yield is always the uh, main objective for, for mm, breeding. But besides that, uh, soybean also has objectives like uh, um, high protein content, high oil content, and uh, the uh, improvement for of quality, like uh, high isoflavonoid uh, content uh, and uh, uh, no bitter flavor. So. The protein content, high protein content, means uh, uh, cont the protein content greater than 45%. Uh, uh, so far, there are great, uh, more than 40 uh, varieties uh, which are high protein content, and uh, a bunch of varieties has high oil content, which contain uh, greater than 21.5% oil. I have uh, listed some of the varieties, but uh, most of them, uh, uh, the, the, the names are in Chinese. I didn't uh, translate uh, that because uh, it's 
even translate that is also just a, a character it doesn't mean something to you. So I, I, I didn't translate them. But from the, the table, we can see the protein content, uh, the highest ones uh, exceeded like 48%. That's uh, uh, quite a uh, high. And uh, uh, high oil content, the highest one uh, reached 25%. Also, uh, there are uh, some varieties abroad with uh, uh, no beanie flavor. This, this can be used for making uh, so, uh, soy milk. So uh, these are the pictures of some elite varieties. And uh, the one of the representatives of high yield varieties, which is uh, called Zhonghuang 301, uh, it has a yield exceeded uh, 4,615 kilogram per hectare for three years. And the national high yield record was uh, obtained in 2018 in Xinjiang uh, Weiwei Autonomic Region. Uh, with uh, Henon 991, uh, the harvest, uh, the, the actually uh, uh, yield exceeded 6,356 kilogram per hectare. For uh, rape seed breeding, uh, here, I mainly talk about uh, uh, brassic neighbors, which is canola. Uh, the objectives including high yield and high oil content, also high oleic acid content, because the oleic acid content is more nutritious than, than others, also high, uh, high stability. And uh, uh, resistance to club root. Uh, this club root is a new disease in China, but it uh, 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 does threaten the, uh, the, uh, the, in, the industry. So the yield loss of the diseased field is quite significant. And uh, uh, suitable for mechanical harvest because of the lack of uh, um, human lab and early maturation for uh, uh, intensity cropping. Colorful flowers for uh, rural tourism. So uh, there are high content uh, varieties, high oil content and yield uh, varieties. Uh, I listed uh, here are the representatives. The highest one now is uh, uh, released, uh, was released last year with uh, oil content uh, uh, of 51. 2-3% uh, and it, the yield uh, is uh, um, uh, out-yielded uh, the control by 10% uh, and also Zhongyu Zha 19, uh, it, its oil content is 49.95%. Uh, the yield is also high. So you uh, 55 also has oil content above uh, 49% and with uh, yield uh, uh, higher than the control by 15.6%. 15, 15 
uh, of grain, the oil yield uh, is uh, high, uh, higher than the control by 29.4 percent. And that the 199 also have uh, oil content uh, above 48 percent. Actually, in in China, the criteria for high oil content variety uh, is the uh, the oil content above 48 percent. And uh, uh, also, uh, the, for the whole country, there are some, uh, in recent years, there are some high oleic acid container varieties released. There are two uh, levels of uh, oleic acid content for high oleic acid container varieties. One is uh, uh, 73% and uh, the other is 75%. Both uh, are uh, can be uh, released as uh, uh, high oleic acid content varieties. Uh, uh, so far, they are, there are more than 10 high oleic acid content varieties uh, released. Uh, this I listed some from like Hunan province, Zhejiang province, Hubei province, uh, Chongqing and Yunnan. This uh, province are mainly uh, located in the Yangtze, uh, uh, Yangtze river regions, which is the biggest uh, semi wind, uh, rapeseed growing production area. Uh, there are also some varieties uh, resistant to club load. Uh, these are uh, quite useful because uh, uh, before, actually, before 2015, there, there was several years, some places cannot grow rapeseed because of this club And since uh, 2015, uh, some varieties uh, resistant to club were developed. From this, we can see the uh, resistant ones uh, Uh, only have uh, like 0.1% uh, uh, individuals uh, died, but uh, the control right uh, is uh, like was uh, destroyed uh, completely with 100% uh, individual plants uh, diseased. And uh, after the uh, in this, uh, after they uh, grow to uh, before flower and all the plants, most of the plants uh, died. For early maturation, which uh, means uh, growth duration, uh, uh, it uh, is like 118 to 2000 days and uh, with a uh, high yield. There are two cropping systems. One is uh, uh, one uh, ripseed uh, and one rice. Uh, the other one is uh, a ripseed rice rice. That's a three cross crops per year. The uh, yield uh, criteria is different. Um, uh, also for early maturation varieties, they need to be uh, resistant to, to disease like to sclerotinia resistant. 
and also uh, resistant to code, what logging and drought. Uh, also uh, require um, short ball for machine harvesting like uh, uh, port sheltering resistant, logging resistant, and also high density um, tolerant. So there are uh, some varieties uh, released for early maturation. Uh, cropping. So like uh, this, uh, those ones, uh, I only uh, need like uh, less than 180 days to uh, from seeds to mature. And for flower color, uh, uh, there are many different colors of uh, flowers for um, uh, rape seed now. And uh, there are some varieties uh, uh, registered, not registered, just uh, uh, released. This uh, uh, varieties can be used for us at uh, uh, just for a uh, tourist, like uh, these uh, patterns, uh, and which can promote rural tourists, uh, especially in, in China during uh, right after spring festival, uh, mm, uh, people uh, king on go out, go to the the countryside to to travel to to just uh, have a look of the the uh, uh, scene. So this uh, period is quite a, a good time for uh, for people to go uh, go to the countryside and the uh, yellow colored or colorful uh, ripseed. Uh, uh, they they very much like that, and for peanut breeding, and uh, also like uh, besides uh, uh, high yield and uh, multiple resistance, uh, they uh, we are mainly focus on high oleic acid content. Uh, in peanut, the criteria is greater than. 75% of uh, oleic acid content. And uh, so far, there are more than 50 varieties released. This uh, because of uh, the, um, uh, the uh, creation of the FED2G mutant. We already have uh, like molecular markers for this, uh, this genes and for marker assistant selection. So that's why the breeding uh, progress uh, quite, uh, uh, quite fast. So actually there are uh, more than 50, that's a fi I, I think uh, 53 varieties uh, released for uh, high oleic acid uh, peanut varieties. And uh, the uh, oleic acid content is quite high. The highest one reached like 20, uh, like 82%. So this, this data actually is, uh, um, before 2018, I believe last year and this year, there should be more. And for season breeding, there are over 116 cultivars have been released. Uh, most were uh, bred by a crossing. The yield is about uh, 1,315 kilogram per hectare. Uh, so, um, 
uh, at the moment. And uh, oil content is uh, about 55%. Uh, I don't have much information on this. I only uh, get uh, some uh, variety information from my colleague in Oakley. So they have like uh, Zhongzi uh, 13. Uh, and uh, this 20, this is uh, high oil content, like uh, 58.62% uh, of oil. And also Zhong, Zhongzi uh, 78, uh, this one is a semi dwarf one. So uh, this can be can be uh, used, can be harvested by, by combine um, because of its uh, lodging resistance and also um, tolerant to, to high density. And uh, this one is uh, 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 12, which is uh, disease resistant and also uh, resistant to water lodging. Uh, this Zhongzi 14 uh, with a wider adaption, uh, also high yield and high resistant to disease and lodging. Uh, this one is a uh, black coated one black is with a black seed coat the price uh, is higher than the white coat seed coat ones and this one also uh, for uh, both for uh, produce uh, uh, system seeds and uh, for uh, tourists because it has a, a, like a purple flower color. So this, this is the uh, scene of the uh, flowering. Uh, sesame. Uh, then uh, I would like to uh, introduce, uh, talk something about our uh, institute. Actually, we have uh, several kind of uh, crop, uh, oil crops uh, to uh, do research, but the main ones are uh, rapeseed, soybean, peanut, sesame. Uh, sunflower, we only have sunflower and other minor uh, oil seeds crops. We only work on gem plasm, but not uh, like uh, other uh, oil seed crops. Uh, not only gem plasm resources, uh, but also breeding, um, uh, cultivation, uh, processing. Uh, all this. So the research field and the missions of our uh, uh, institute is like a gem plus collection and uh, uh, assessment, genomics and molecular biology, breeding, transgenic research, uh, plant uh, uh, physiology, nutrition, uh, plant protection, pathology, uh, production, processing, and uh, food safety and uh, quality management. The mission is to increase yield production uh, and the supply of oil seeds, also to improve quality for human nutrition and safety, uh, and to enhance the production efficiency and the competitive competitiveness of uh, our seeds. We have more than, uh, we have more than 
17 senior scientists and more than 100 technicians uh, also visiting scientists and students. Uh, there are uh, 13 uh, teams uh, in uh, the Institute, including a uh, breeding of different uh, crops, functional genomics, quality and food safety, uh, lipid chemistry and processing, environmental biology, genetic engineering, molecular breeding, uh, gene plasm and physiology protection. So we also have uh, improved research fertilities. Uh, the, the building, uh, the first picture is the main building of our institute and uh, also some instrument uh, in the laboratories. We have uh, uh, five uh, uh, experimental bases uh, located mainly uh, in, in Hubei province, but also uh, in Qinghai and Jiangxi. And this is uh, the main campus of uh, our institute located in Wuchang. And uh, another one, which is uh, like 40 kilo, uh, uh, meters uh, away from our main campus. And also one uh, in another county of Hubei province, which is only used for GMO uh, experiments. And uh, one in the uh, in the northwest northwest part of China, which is used for growing like uh, oil seed rib uh, in, uh, in the summer. And another one in Jiangxi province for ecological trials. Then the ongoing uh, research activities of my group uh, it's mainly focused on genetic improvement of oil seed rip with the poultry shattering, lodging, and herbicide resistance. Uh, we actually uh, want to uh, increase the yield and uh, improve production efficiency of oil seed rip. But uh, uh, oil seed rip silica is easy to dehance. So some variety are easy to launch. Uh, it is difficult to, to mechanize, uh, to harvest by combine. So uh, we, uh, we, the objective of my group is to improve port shelter uh, logging and uh, herbicide resistance of uh, uh, rape seed varieties. This uh, actually, uh, we are in the turning of uh, rape seed production model uh, now. Before we mainly use manual harvest, but now people uh, like to do combined harvest. But the problem is the combined harvest uh, cost uh, pot shattering. So lodging also uh, handled the machine harvesting. So for that, we developed a method to assess pot shattering, shattering resistant. Uh, which is a random impact test by shaking uh, the pods with uh, uh, steel balls. And we performed uh, GWAS analysis for pot shattering and uh, 
uh, identified uh, six uh, QTLs uh, for port shattering resistance. We also constructed a uh, DH population uh, and using this DH population, we mapped uh, several QTLs for port uh, shattering resistance. Among that, the one located on A9 chromosome is, has a major effect for port shattering. And uh, we uh, did final mapping of this uh, QTL and uh, find that SHP1 is uh, the gene of uh, underlying this QTL. And overexpress press of this gene decreased the port shattering resistant. Uh, but uh, there is a little transposon insertion in the promoter of this uh, uh, gene, um, which may be the reason for the certain resistance of. Uh, and uh, the methylation of this promoter region. Uh, also uh, accounts for the increase of port shattering resistance. We also identified one germplasm with special uh, uh, silica structure. This uh, silica structure there has, it has no margin between the two couples. Uh, this, uh, uh, structure increased uh, port shattering resistance. Uh, this one actually is the highest, uh, has the highest resistance level of uh, in uh, oil seed uh, uh, rib lines that we have uh, tested because uh, our uh, label tested. Uh, uh, all the uh, light bread lines uh, in, uh, enrolled in, involved in the uh, national and the provincial uh, uh, trials for uh, registration trials. So uh, each year we assessed at least uh, two, uh, 200 uh, newly bred lines. So this one is the one with the highest uh, port shattering resistance. And uh, we found uh, this uh, special character structure is controlled by a single gene. Another work uh, we are doing is to uh, uh, do the genome editing in oil rib. We have developed a platform for uh, genome editing in all seed, seed rib, which uh, we can obtain uh, mutation, mu mutation uh, plants within uh, three months and uh, create some gem uh, plasm with port shattering resistance uh, by mutate uh, some genes related to port shattering like INDSHPALC. Also, uh, like the one uh, Jack uh, called uh, DIG gene that also increased uh, port shattering. But uh, the problem is uh, the muta mu mutant has high resistance to port shattering, but uh, the uh, silica length uh, is decreased, which means the yield uh, is decreased. And we also established the best editing system uh, called A3A PBE system, uh, which can generate uh, efficient best editing uh, in oil seed rib. We 
used uh, ALS, which is uh, herbicide resistant gene, RGA uh, and IAA7, which is uh, uh, for, for plant uh, stage, uh, for plant height. So by uh, mutate uh, uh, these genes, we obtained uh, gene plus with uh, uh, semi joyful stature uh, and also uh, herbicide resistance. So besides this, uh, uh, oh, this work, we also develop varieties suitable for mechanical harvest, like the one called Sadi 199, which is highly resistant to logging and medium resistant to pot shattering. Now we are also marketing this variety. Besides that, we also, uh, for the last uh, uh, five, or five years, five, like, last four years, we released more than 10 varieties, uh, which can be used uh, uh, not only in the region of Yangtze River region and the semi uh, uh, wind uh, rapid breeding uh, production area, but also the west, uh, northwest part of China, which grows grow the spring type uh, uh, rapid. So with this, I think I will uh, will. Uh, finishing my talk, and uh, I would like to thank um, Mr. Uh, uh, and uh, other professors and the doctors to supply some debt to me, and also the fund bodies for for our research. Thank you very much, please. Thank you, professor. Thank you, professor. Thank you, thank you professor. Thank you. Uh, you have uh, uh, given us uh, extremely valuable uh, presentation and there's a lot of lessons to be learned and uh, we really need your cooperation uh, to take uh, these lessons to actual practical applications. For that, uh, we are already discussing uh, possibilities. Now, uh, should we finish with you or we also listen to the second speaker from China? Dr. Butter. G. So, so you want to finish? Sir, I'm here, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, thank you, sir. Sir, I was I was basically discussing about uh, the overall situation of uh, oil seeds in Pakistan. I have submitted that uh, we are a big importer of the palm oil in Pakistan. We are importing the crude palm oil. We are crudeing, importing the refined, deodorized and bleached palm oil, which is very cheap. And we are importing the palm olein. And this total import is more than 3 million ton. In addition to the import of palm oil, we are also an importer of the soybean oil. And this is this oil import is over 97% of the uh, of the uh, of uh, total oil, uh, edible oil import is of palm oil. Whereas we are also importing 700,000 ton of edible oil seeds for crushing. This edible oil seed crushing is mainly of the canola oil, the sunflower, uh, uh, canola uh, uh, oil seeds, the sunflower oil seeds, and the soybean oil seeds. We are having a compensation or the local production with, with the mainly share of cotton. In addition to cotton, we are also producing sunflower and canola. If you, th if you think that uh, our 
historical import of canola oil seed is over 300,000 ton, whereas we are producing 150,000 ton plus at the rape seed and mustards. We are eyeing on the substitution of the canola with the local production. We are eyeing on the import substitution of sunflower production, but we cannot compete in the presence of a very cheap, around $600 palm oil import in Pakistan, because this palm oil import is creating a low market situation, and that is a, that is a major cause of uh, the edible oil promotion in Pakistan. But we, what we have done that, Pakistan Oil Seed Development Board under the Ministry of National Food Security has launched a mega project. And Punjab is a major beneficiary of that project, wherein over 5, 5 billion rupee will be spending on the promotion of the sesame. Sesame is basically a good crop which require a good in replacement of the seed varieties and uh, canola as well as the sunflower. We are supporting the farmers with 5,000 rupees per acre for sunflower, for canola and rupee 2,000 for the sesame. In all the three crops, the situation is very, very encouraging. In last one or two years, these Canola acreage is almost double, and the 20% increase has been witnessed in the sunflower as well. But uh, in the, if you see the increase in rapeseed mustard, and this is almost or 200,000 acres expansion, and this this year it has been expanded to over 700,000 acres in Punjab province. And this increase in rape seed and mustard is due to the massive awareness campaign about the canola and rape seed and mustards and edible oil seed crops. We are trying to improve the seed quality. We are trying to replace the obsolete varieties, create awareness for the productivity enhancement, as well as to reduce the cost of production by supporting during the seed, during the crop production, not entering into any distortion in the market. We are having a big program of the machinery replacements. As Mr. Fee said that uh, we have uh, very good machines, seating machines and, uh, uh, and other machines required for the uh, all seed crops and that are included in our program. No edible oils are in a competition with the increasing in the support price of wheat. This is true. But this year, it, this is not as uh, suitable for wheat because uh, we are having very dry season in October and November. And that's why the role of uh, rape seed and mustard is not reducing at, at the pace one was expecting because of the rising price of wheat. And that's why we are thinking that uh, the rape seed and mustard will gain its area. But the wheat will also be increasing by having the area from the other crops. And that's why this is a win-win situation. And uh, the local procurement or local uh, reception of the uh, these crops have also been increased because of the increase in value of dollars and the COVID situation and many other factors have uh, impacted the local procurement. But we are trying to convince the solvent, solvent industry as well to rely on uh, the ports. But my submission to the Honorable House is the major intervention in the quality of seats. We want a very good jump plan. We want international collaborations because our major import uh, in, of uh, sunflower and canola is through this seed, in the seeds. And we want the local best quality varieties. Uh, we want a good quality, a, a 
mustard varieties in double zero, and uh, that can replace the rapeseed and mustards, glucosinolate and uh, uh, erucic acid varieties, so that we can easily replace the canola type or the double zero varieties into the mustard seeds, and that can be easy replacement. And uh, the second one is the high yielding, because by growing, by getting the high yields, one can compensate the marginal rate of return to the farmers. And uh, this will be possible with the international collaboration and with the national vision. We are trying to convince to the government that restrict the oil, edible oil importers for the local production as well by giving them the condition that if they are, if they are uh, importing a huge farm oil in Pakistan, their LCs can be, uh, can be attached with the local procurement for whatever the ratio is. Likewise, we are trying to convince to the federal government that in the area of seed production, whether from the multinational companies, the local companies, that every company may be bound to have 2% or 3% or 5% of the total R&D business in edible oil or in the pulses or in such orphan crops because they are investing very less in this sector. Like vegetable sector is also not uh, 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 having the local R&D programs. And this is basically the strengthening of R&D program. And uh, Good said that uh, you have engaged the Chinese and other uh, elite research institutes to talk on this issue. And I'm pretty sure that uh, a good R&D program can have the local production, but uh, with the local production and the local management and the best agronomy and the best market prices can have the better replacement of uh, these varieties. But this will be possible with the very strong national vision on oil seeds. Thank you, sir. The, uh, thank you, Butter Sahib. So you are predicting that uh, despite uh, uh, high price for wheat, we are not uh, likely to reduce the acreage of canola, which is a very good sign. So we have to invest on better technology for wheat instead of uh, increasing acreage of wheat. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our next guest speaker from China, uh, Dr. Wang Yong. He is from Chinese Academy of Tropical Agriculture, and he's expert in uh, uh, palm oil. And uh, you have heard uh, Dr. Butter uh, telling us that our biggest import actually in uh, edible oil segment is palm oil import. Over to you, Dr. <laughs> Yang. Okay. You hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm can... starting. Yes. Okay. Uh... Okay, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Yung Wang from the uh, Coconut Research Institute from the Chinese Academy of Tropical Agriculture Sciences, CATAS. Okay, the left here <coughs> is our uh, uh, Coconut Research Institute logo. This is CATAS logo. <coughs> okay, um, previous like uh, another uh, previous speaker from uh, Chinese. Uh, Professor Hu introduced uh, some uh, oil crops, but here I want to share some information about the uh, tropical palm and oil crops in China. <coughs> okay, uh, this is China map, and uh, below that is in the red color here. The red color here is the tropical area in China. But actually, it's a subtropical area. Uh, the area is around uh, 50 million hectare, and in a lot of uh, population, a uh, huge population involved. And uh, the potential area for coconut, I want to emphasize, is, is around 50 thousand hectare. Here is some of uh, the uh, oil crops in China. The first uh, 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 top three is soybean. Rip seed and peanut. Peanuts are in you know, Chinese also are uh, major 
uh, uh, major production area for peanut. Um, we are uh, the, here, here in import, import proportion. For peanut, you can say we, uh, we, we can also supply ourselves, but for soybean and rich seed, we import, we import a lot. Um, here is global uh, area, uh, 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 is the global uh, area yield and the proportion of these uh, oil crops here is in China. And uh, also uh, previous uh, uh, speaker from Pakistan also mentioned oil palm. But palm, palm oil originally, I remember, is around six or uh, five or six million tons every year. Uh, for, uh, for China, we import major from Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. Uh, so another tropical oil uh, is uh, coconut. Coconut uh, global is around 10 million hectares, but in China, you can say we just around have uh, uh, for around, uh, I'll say 40,000 hectares, not too much not to mention uh, compared to the uh, global area. Um, as you can see here, almost, uh, uh, yeah, almost uh, all of it for processing. We also import a coconut uh, nuts from uh, Philippines, from Indonesia, and also from India. Okay, uh, the last one is uh, oil chameleon. Oil chameleon is the uh, Chinese uh, native, uh, I'll say, uh, oil crop is just like a bush, a kind of bush. We have for the, for the plantation, we have around uh, four million hectares, a lot of plantations. But um, actually, for now, it's not. Uh, it's most of the I, I think most of the is uh, young plantations. So the yield for now is not too much. Okay. Uh, here is where we uh, located uh, the uh, the Katas. The Katas, uh, you know, this this is uh, China. This is Hainan Island, Hainan Island, and uh, here uh, in us is Haiko. Haiko is capital of Hainan Province, and our coconut research institute is in, located in Wenchang. Wenchang actually the uh, the coconut plantation in the whole uh, Hainan Island. Uh, it's around uh, forty percent. Okay, it's around forty percent in Wen Wenchang. That's why our coconut research institute located here. Uh, our institute was established uh, around, uh, I say, uh, three years ago. Uh, uh, no, 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 for forty years ago. Uh, here is Sanya. Sanya now is the actually is uh, almost the north, uh, the south uh, city. In, in in Hainan, and uh, now we also have uh, uh, have a research center because the industry center in Sanya. I will uh, give some information later. Uh, for our coconut research institute, we have around uh, 450 hectares, and uh, part of that, most of that, is for research. <clears throat> okay, here I want to give a brief introduction of our crops in interested. Uh, of course, uh, coconut is first. Coconut, we have coconut, we have oil palm, we have betel nut, we have date palm. It's uh, the, what we call palm cross. Uh, the light too, uh, coconut and, and a betel nut is the uh, local, uh, uh, I can say the major crops in Hainan Island. And for oil palm and date palm, we just started around, uh, for oil palm, we just started around 10 years ago. And for data, data palm may be just around five years ago. Not too much history, but we uh, found it, uh, we started from coconut. Here is our chameleon. What do we, uh, uh, we have around uh, uh, four, four or six, uh, six million uh, hectares in China. It's also, you can say, uh, when it's matured, we can get, uh, we can harvest and get the uh, seeds. The seeds here, we have high, uh, quality oil, very similar, very similar to uh, olive oil. Okay, these are our major research centers. 
uh, we divide from by uh, crops. We have a coconut research center, beet nut, oil palm, date palm, and oil chameleon. And we also have a seed industry uh, research center in Sanya. <coughs> um, okay, we are crop studio. So germplasm is very important for us. So for coconut, we have around uh, five hectare, hectare, uh, five uh, hectare for germplasm. We have now have around uh, 200. Then bit palm, uh, bit nut, and oil palm and date palm. And we also have other uh, palms, but not crops, just some palm uh, species. So we have different uh, section here. Left is uh, coconut section, uh, co coconut sector, uh, and uh, bit nut, oil palm and deep palm. So altogether we have around uh, uh, 28 hectares for germ plasm. <clears throat> uh, here is our varieties. <clears throat> for coconut, now we have our four uh, varieties. What, what do we call it? One year, number two, three, four, and another uh, 78 uh, HF1. This major, uh, uh, varieties uh, popularized in uh, Hainan Island. Here is a uh, bit nut. We have for one, only one varieties, but it's very good. Uh, I want to uh, uh, make, uh, I want to share some information about this, uh, this, this crop. You know, um, bit nut is not all, uh, is not all crop, <clears throat> but it's uh, actually is the biggest, uh, in uh, biggest crop in Han Island, we uh, have around uh, uh, we have around uh, sorry, I have to calculate. Uh, we have around uh, uh, twenty. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, for, uh, forty, forty. Uh, uh, hectares, and a lot. Uh, yeah, th this is uh, the biggest crop in Henan Province. Uh, we have uh, 150 uh, hectares <clears throat> and over 200 million people involved. And uh, the, uh, how say, they create around 5 billion US dollars every year only for this crop. So it's the biggest crop in Hainan province. Uh, here is, uh, uh, here, yeah, left is our, uh, is our plantation. Plantation here. You also have some intercrops, and here is the you, you can say the, the they have the seeds, and you know the fresh seeds, the fresh uh, fruit is quite expensive. Uh, it's around right now. It's around three uh, six six uh, U.S. dollars per kilo fresh fruit. So it's quite expensive. Uh, it's uh, the the uh, sorry. Here is the, uh, the factory. The factory actually not, uh, previously is a major factory. The company is located in Hunan province, another province located in mainland in China. And by the uh, plantations, most plantations are located in Hainan province. So we provide, uh, we, uh, uh, provide uh, materials, raw materials. And another place, another province in Hunan province, they have the, the factories, they get the Final products. Okay. Here's the uh, date palm. As I mentioned, the date palm we just started from uh, around uh, around five years ago. So now you can see the trees uh, is quite young. We just uh, have the trial planting in Hainan and Yunnan province. Yunnan is uh, next to or uh, is uh, uh, one of the tropical subtropical area in uh, mainland. And so. Uh, uh, for now, we just have a cherry planting and they gave some germplasm evaluation, some research, not too much. We have some correlation with the Arabic uh, countries. Okay, this is a major. Now I want to uh, share some information for uh, more of the coconut because coconut we, uh, we started from coconut, we have more information to share with you. Akuna, we started from germplasm breeding, crop cultivation, plant uh, protection, food production, uh, industrial economy. As you can say, uh, people we have a lot of other department like uh, 
plant protection and also the oil chemistry, uh, microbiology, and also uh, molecular biology, all these different departments. Now we just uh, combine it to uh, as the uh, crop research center. Okay, so see, uh, we have some uh, special germplasm. Uh, uh, this uh, we collected uh, uh, started from uh, maybe uh, 40 years ago when we started. We have some special scenes, and uh, yeah, this is some uh, old uh, uh, study. Now uh, we uh, for this four uh, for this uh, four uh, palm crops, uh, coconut. Uh, Okay, we we have the we already released the genome uh, data in uh, 2017. Okay, for oil palm, it was released by uh, Malaysia in 2013. Uh, the rest two, and uh, bit palm, uh, bit nut, and the uh, dead palm, we already have the the uh, genome uh, data, but. Uh, not finished, not released, it could be next year. <clears throat> so uh, what I mean, we are, uh, uh, we invest, uh, invest a lot for, uh, I'll say, research on these uh, palm crops. <clears throat> okay, this is, uh, yeah, this is a genome uh, for coconut. Also, uh, we, we, the, uh, we sequence the high the local varieties, high nantal we cut. This is some uh, information, the markers, and uh, this one is quite uh, interesting. This, uh, you know, for coconut, we have for uh, four major varieties. We what do you call the the green one? Remember the green one? Uh, we call it, it has some special, it has some uh, aromatic uh, flavor. So we call it aromatic coconut and without that smell. So we have this, uh, um, you know, we have this uh, marker to identify the, I'll say the, the qualified seedlings before we sell it to uh, local farmers. Okay, here's some uh, cultivation. Cultivation now uh, are, uh, we have some, you know, in tropical area for all these crops, especially for uh, for coconut and oil palm, you know, the uh, the how say the weed control is really a problem. I guess it's common problem in tropical areas, and so we, we try to in, introduce some grass to control the weed, and also. You know, in China, the the, the land is very uh, insufficient. So we also use watermelon. Here we also use a pineapple, something like this. And uh, in Wintown, you know, Wintown we have a famous uh, food. Uh, we we, we call it uh, Wintown chicken. Wintown chicken uh, here uh, because we have for around forty uh, coconut plantation in the whole island. So and as that uh, we uh, we have a lot of. Uh, you know, farmer raise a lot of chickens, so it's quite famous. And also, some like uh, black uh, goat. Okay. <clears throat> uh, they also have some, uh, you know, uh, uh, some statistics information about the coconut and pineapple, coconut and papaya, and also watermelon. They have some information, output, and income. They, Get some uh, information for the farmers or big company to decide. Are they going to do it? Okay. It's also garden, coconut garden with chicken. We have some more information about this. Uh, yeah, this pasture and disease control. And for coconut, uh, we have for two major uh, pasture. This is one of it. Uh, now we are, okay, we just see. Uh, the, the, the natural enemy to control this because you know the it's the coconut trees it could be very tall after years so it's very difficult to use uh, this pesticide uh, also you can say it's no use it costs a lot and no use so uh, the uh, um, this is one of our factory that 
the, uh, the, the, the factory. People produce this kind of enemy, uh, the, the, this, uh, uh, these uh, natural enemies and released in the field and they have to control. Uh, so the local government also uh, put a lot of money to, to uh, encourage farmers to use this master to control this pasture. Also, you can you know you can uh, reduce the the, the the pesticide. Okay, next one is this uh, red palm weevil. Okay, this one uh, is also uh, 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 serious damage to coconut trees. Uh, the now they normally they use the uh, hormone to to attract uh, attract and catch them. They also have some also sounding detection methods, but major we use that in for uh, we 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 uh, use the uh, the uh, the hormone. Okay. Uh, for you know for coconut, the disease not serious. Uh, the uh, this in coconut stem bleeding is uh, could be the major uh, disease, but uh, actually it's not so. Uh, serious in, in Hainan province, but they do uh, do something in this in, for this to control this diseases, but not so ser seriously. Okay. Uh, yeah, we previously we also have for food processing. We have for separate uh, food processing department. Now we just uh, uh, combine to the crop research center. Uh, yeah, one of the is the uh, coconut sub. You know, the use the uh, binding the space and get the the sub to make the the the, the coconut uh, the wine. The, this is coconut oil, and uh, but they also combine with the, the corn, olive, and some flour, some other oil tea. This uh, combined with some or get us coconut oil. But coconut for I say for myself, I think the the coconut oil or VCO, the uh the the smell is not so good for me. It's too strong, I guess. So they also have some other uh products to 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 okay to meet different need. Okay, uh yeah, this is uh, the first one is coconut wine. Uh, Actually, I remember when I uh, I have been here. I was here for around uh, ten years, uh, ten years ago around here. Uh, when I first uh, came here, uh, I remember this coconut wine is quite uh, famous here. Every year we consume a lot here, but later we stopped because you know coconut wine it uh, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, materials is the uh, coconut sub. But coconut sap, if you get the coconut sap, that means you lose the inflorescence, you lose the yield, the, you lose the fruit. So farmers, uh, they prefer, you know, now the uh, fruits, the uh, price is going up. So they prefer to, uh, to, to harvest uh, the fruits. So we don't have enough uh, sap. So we just stop these products. It's quite a, you know, it's one of our favorite uh, wine. But now we stop. Here's some other sugars, but not too much because uh, here, you know, more and more, uh, some we have some local um, um, big company uh, in Hanan. They have these products. Okay, here, uh, I want to share some um, this culture research here. Uh, this one is coconut. Uh, I, I, uh, I mentioned that we have four uh, palm uh, crops. We do uh, all of this uh, for myself. I'm in charge of this part, this research center, and uh, the first one is the embryo. First, of course, we have the embryo. Uh, we guess uh, this is normally for the general plasma rescue. We guess uh, the seeding. It's not. Uh, it's uh, how say. It's, it's quite easy. And uh, below that, we just finish uh, this picture. I guess take this picture. Around uh, around two weeks ago, uh, this is from the uh, this is the is the uh, uh, say this uh, embryogenesis 
uh, it's, it's from the, we, we can see colors, we can see embryo, then we get to the, the shoot, then we get to, uh, uh, the setting. Now we just uh, guess it's not too much, but it's good start. You know, uh, among all these four palm crops, coconut is the most difficult one. Now we've made some progress, yeah. And uh, uh, here we use one of our matures to get this results, it's good. Now uh, we are started from other uh, 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 see, varieties. We have four varieties. It's uh, quite popular in Hainan Island in recent years. We have for uh, every year we can, we uh, uh, collaborate with the uh, local uh, company. So recent years, every year we, we can sell around uh, uh, 500 uh, thousand, 500 thousand seedings, the four varieties together to local market. So it's, uh, and the, the seeding is quite uh, expensive for like the, it's around the one seeding around the one year is old, around 180 centimeters to 100 centimeters. The price is around uh, 100 maybe is around uh, 15. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's around uh, 15 US dollars per sitting. Yeah, expensive. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's expensive because coconut uh, sitting is really has some problem, not so easy. Uh, first, you know, the, the uh, as I mentioned, farmers prefer to get the uh, uh, fresh young fruit, uh, fruit to, to, to the market, to harvest to the market. If you want to uh, if you ask the farmers to leave the uh, mature, uh, fully mature fruits for seeding and propagation, you know, uh, it, it, it will, uh, I'll say, you have to pay two or three times higher. Yeah, you have to, uh, you have to pay more money to, to buy it, you know. So the price uh, is, uh, the, 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 the uh, fruit is uh, expensive and it costs a long time, the cost is higher. And also, you know, the for coconut, uh, in most cases, the uh, generation rate is quite low. Sometimes it's, uh, I guess, uh, it's around 50%. So you lose half of the uh, uh, fruits. So it's pretty high. The price is pretty high. So, and uh, that's why we want your, uh, we, we started from the, uh, uh, the, the uh, discussion. We want to use uh, clone seedings to solve this problem. We want to uh, reduce the prices. Uh, another reason for uh, we, 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 we do the uh, discussion for coconut because, you know, uh, for, uh, for seeding propagation, it's not like oil palm, you know, oil palm, one bunch is around, uh, maybe you can get one thousand seeds. That means you, have, you can have for one thousand seeding per bunch every year. Per year, um, per, per tree, oil palm tree, you may have 10 thunder seedling per year. Yeah, you, you have large, but for coconut, 100 as most. So it's not easy. So that's why it's expensive. So we started, uh, we try to use the uh, discussion to solve this problem, but we still have a long way to go. Um, also, you know, we do this culture because this culture is, is the, the, uh, it's very important. If we want to do some research, uh, we need also uh, genetic transformation and gene editing for molecular breeding. The first step is to culture. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, here is the oil palm. Actually, in our institute, uh, we finished oil palm to culture first. Around two years ago, yeah, we, we, we have the uh, tissue culture, open tissue culture, and now we have a lot of our uh, seedlings uh, in field. Okay, and uh, after the oil palm, we uh, started the uh, here is the deep palm. Uh, palm. We use different uh, <clears throat> materials as the explant, the embryos, the roots, 
the merge them, the uh, young life, and you get scatters, you get the, uh, the shoot, and now get the, uh, the, the, the uh, seeding, cloning seedlings. Now we also have a lot of cloning seedlings, okay? <clears throat> we just finished around the uh, yeah, last year. Okay, then we uh, we started the uh, coconut and uh, actually we started coconut uh, uh, cheese culture um, many years ago, but not too much progress. But now we, we finished the uh, oil palm, we finished date palm, and now we get some made a big progress in coconut. Yes, that's good. Uh, and uh, it's a uh, bit not. But then we just started uh, actually uh, two months ago. We get some uh, young uh, inflorescence. Okay, this this fluorescence, this picture is too old. We have younger, much younger inflorescence, and also has the, uh, the stem. The right is the uh, stem from seedlings, and also is open. And also we use the, uh, the mesh stem. We use different uh, materials as uh, uh, ex uh, explant to we're trying to introduce uh, to the, uh, the catalyst first. Uh, according to our uh, present technologies, I think once we have the uh, colors, yeah, it's we are we close to the have the the embryo and the settings in not too much. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to I want to say that among all these four uh, okay, these four pump species, uh, pump crops, coconut is mostly difficult and then oil palm and then uh, uh, how say the bit nut the uh, the uh, yeah, how say deep palm is much easier we we just started the bit nut because uh, for the market you know bit nut the sitting price is quite low it's just around one US US dollars per sitting one US dollars but for coconut it's around 15 that's why we just started from uh, two months ago. But I think we, we have we, we will have some uh, some good results later. Okay, here's some um, also share some uh, challenges. You know, in China for coconut, just for coconut, you know, it's around you know Hainan Tao is quite you know just like a local varieties or local tap. It's very uh, suitable to to plant in Hainan uh, Island. Here is around uh, over 80% of the planted coconuts are Hainan Tao. But Hainan Tao has some problem, you know, uh, you can have it for many years, but you know, it's grown very high, very high and um, it's, it's very difficult to harvest. So, and people, you know, Tropic people, they uh, prefer farmers, last generation. They don't want to put in too, 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 how say, want to put too much in, they want to, they don't want to put a uh, lot of money to, 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 to um, how say, uh, to manage the, uh, the coconut plantation. So the low output is problem, okay? Uh, you know, another problem, you know, is coat damage. Uh, actually, the whole uh, Hainan Island is actually a subtropical area. Could be uh, the, the, uh, the, the southern city, Sanya. Uh, could be, could be, uh, uh, it's, it's also not really a tropical area combined with uh, Thailand and Malaysia, these tropical countries. So it's our uh, tropical, uh, subtropical area, especially in our place winter is in, it's in, also in the uh, north of this island. Cold damage is, is really a problem for coconut tree. Some varieties not so suitable uh, to, 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 to plant here, you know. Uh, here in winter, in some, in some years, winter is as low as uh, 10 centigrade. Yeah, 10 is quite low, it is quite cold. So it's a problem. So we also are looking for some cold resistance varieties, but you know, uh, for tropical crops, some people, uh, you know, cold resistance is always, uh, I'll say, is a target for breeders. But for tropical uh, crops, you know, most 
production area. It don't care about the, it don't have this problem. It don't uh, invest too much on this coat resistance uh, research or breeding. So coat resistance uh, variety is not easy to get here, but we, we still, we are working on it. We already found some germplasm and then how to make it uh, a stable variety and uh, then uh, we, we are working on it. Another problem is the, uh, uh, okay, the uh, M, uh, impure seedlings because you know uh, for coconut in most countries you know uh, the I say how they get the seedlings we, we, we just get the uh, maybe maybe this plantation 100 uh, hectares is also one sitting uh, one uh, how say one varieties mm, people we get fruits mature fruits and to to for a seeding propagation, but actually, you know, the every not uh, the 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 uh, the, the fruits are not same. That means the uh, varieties are not so. Uh, I see the seedings are not not same. Uh, it's a problem. It's a problem for. Uh, remember, I, I told you we have the uh, aromatic uh, flavor. The varieties. Uh, people, you can you can also say even you, you want to get some more uh, uh, fruits from this tree. Some are very uh, the, the, the aromatic uh, flavor is very strong, but some are not. Some are not. Yeah, that's a problem for um, you know high standard commercial plantation is um, people. The, the boss will not accept that. Uh, now we also use the uh, molecular markers. We have the markers to to identify which one are the pure, more pure seedlings. But the problem is that um, uh, the cost is still quite quite high. We have to uh, to to reduce the cost. Then it's possible we can use it to screen every single seedlings. Okay. Another problem is the the coconut products. You know products. Uh, uh, this morning we will have for another uh, seminar among, uh, with uh, the, the the local companies. Uh, you know we still have some problem. You know we now we have for the the coconut juice, but um, uh, coconut juice is a very big market in China. But uh, people maybe prefer to the just like the uh, the the, the, the uh, bottled water. People may like uh, coconut water, fresh water, but coconut water, coconut water products still a problem, have some problems, the flavor, just like uh, most uh, products in the market, they have some special, uh, you have some uh, good smell, just uh, smells like uh, cooked uh, sugar cane, not good. So uh, the products still have some problem. Um, but you know the the market here is very uh, huge in China for the for the coconut products, a lot of things. Um, but you know, as I told, we we only have around four uh, uh, four uh, four uh, four uh, forty uh, some hectares in 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 China uh, for the processing for the companies, these factories for processing the import. Uh, they import almost all of the raw materials from South Asia, Asia, uh, uh, Southeast Asia countries, from Philippines, Indonesia, and India. Okay, that's our, situ that's our situation. Okay, but now what are we doing? We want to reduce this loss and cost and increase the yield and the value of the fund products. So encourage the people, the farmers to get more uh, coconut plantations, provide more uh, fruits for, for, you know, for tourists and for the processing. But actually, uh, even just for tourists, it's also very, uh, it's a huge challenge, okay. Yeah, uh, finally, I want to uh, 
Okay, I want to share some information about the Talent Young Scientist program. I'm not sure some of you may, uh, maybe some of your colleagues already here in China. In, in, you know, in Katas, we have a lot of, uh, uh, this is just, uh, we have a list, just the, uh, one year, we have for three uh, friends from Pakistan. Okay, stay here. Also, this is just for around one year. It was uh, funded by the Ministry of Sensor of Tech, uh, Sensor and Technology uh, of China. Around it gave around uh, yeah uh, every every month you can have around two thousand uh, US dollars per month for this. So you come to our uh, institute. Uh, we work together for for about one year. That's the project. I uh, hope for young people. And the doctors, they can come here, we can work together, okay. Uh, yeah, this is my uh, contact information. I just uh, share, I want to share some information. And if I have one, you have something to discuss? Yeah, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh Hello, thank you, Dr. Wang Yang. Uh, yeah. Very elaborate, very elaborate uh, discussion on palms, and uh, I'm already seeing opportunities to collaborate with you. Uh, we need your help, and uh, we will be coming to you through uh, the commissioner here in Islamabad. Uh, I wonder if uh, Dr. Gu Wen Liang is still available. If he's available, I would like to hear from him now. Uh, who? Wen, Wen Liang, Gu Wen Liang, the Agriculture Commissioner and Chinese Embassy. Okay, thank you, Dr. Iraq. Actually, I was here and listened to a similar. I think tonight we have a very fruitful webinar with, with our two speakers from China. They have given us some wonderful went for presentation. Uh, actually, I would like to give my special thanks to them again, because right now it is almost 11 in o'clock evening in China right now. So actually they use their break time to give us the, the valuable chance to re exchange their work. And uh, actually, uh, I have visited the the Oil Crop Research Institute of CAS in Wuhan uh, several years ago. And uh, I think this institute is the top institute in China, which works in the oil crops. And they, they have won several national prize and uh, they have some national laboratories. And also uh, with, uh, with reference to Coconut Research Institute, I think this is the only institute in China who works in, in tropical oil pumps and they are very expertise in this area. So I think uh, with today's uh, webinar, our Pakistani partners can uh, know what is going on in China and if they are willing and they can contact uh, our two researchers to enhance our collaboration. And of course, uh, the embassy here is willing and uh, ready to assist in uh, any practical cooperation. And uh, furthermore, I would like to say something more uh, related about uh, China and Pakistan. Uh, we have known that uh, in China with the, with the, diet, the diet and the consumption habit, the Chinese people consumers a lot of edible oil each year. For example, in 2018, the edible oil consumption have reached more than 37 million tons. But the production, the total production in China is only around 27 million tons. So you can see there's a huge gap in, in this. And uh, China uh, import a lot of uh, palm oil, uh, soybeans, and also rapeseed oil. 
as well each year. Uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, several several weeks ago, uh, uh, the embassy have facilitated Dr. Ali, who is a postdoctor uh, from Sichuan Agricultural University. He introduced the soybean maize in the Corbin technology here in Pakistan. That's what, what I get from him. He said that uh, uh, if Pakistan can introduce this, this technology, we could uh, uh, increase the, the production of soybean without the without the uh, without uh, any damage to the maize production. So I think it is a very uh, good opportunity for Pakistan because uh, each year Pakistan uses billions of dollars to to export to to import edible oil like soybeans and palm oil. And uh, another thing is that. Uh, uh, in the, I think in the future trade, the, the, Pakistan, the Chinese market would like to, uh, the, the edible oil, uh, the industry in China would uh, go to the uh, healthy and the nutrition trade. Uh, so people more, are more prefer to, to use the olive oil and like oil camellia as well. I've heard that uh, uh, Pakistan has some olive oil plantation in Balochistan. Uh, and uh, I think this is also a potential chance that uh, Pakistan can grow more uh, olive oil, and then you can export such oil to China as well. And also I hope uh, uh, our two agricultural uh, research institutes can enhance the opportunities to introduce the new varieties and technology for, for example, like the rapeseed oil uh, from, from, from Cass and the palm oil from, from Katas. By, by, by introducing the new varieties and technology, we can, uh, we can less, uh, the Pakistan can less import edible oil and also uh, keep the food security of the whole country. That's what, what I want to say today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wen Liang. You have been extremely helpful. And uh, as we have already uh, talked, we are going to come to you with our wish list and we look forward to your support to uh, improve our uh, seed uh, supply chain uh, to, uh, to improve our crop productivity. And uh, you have rightly pointed out that uh, there is opportunity for palms, there is opportunity for uh, soybean, there is opportunity for uh, rapeseed. And uh, also, uh, we have a significant uh, uh, acreage of sesame. And uh, uh, in the, in the uh, Barani areas in Pothar, uh, peanut is a major crop. So uh, yes, uh, we'll be coming to you uh, with more uh, detailed proposals uh, very soon. OK, before I close, uh, I, I, I can see three very important individuals uh, in the audience. Uh, Amar Mirza, Nadeem Mirza, and then Fuad Shah. So they, they come direct from the industry. So uh, Amar Mirza Saab first. Thank you, Dr. Saab. Uh, it is, uh, I feel very excited to see that, you know, there are opportunities out there to collaborate with our uh, Chinese friend um, on, uh, oil seed uh, research. Um, I think we've lost many opportunities and I don't want to dwell, uh, dwell in the past and I think we should look towards the future. I think CPAC uh, gives us um, great opportunity and uh, I think uh, you know, we can import uh, uh, technology and uh, knowledge uh, from, uh, uh, from China. Um, you know, um, a very prominent uh, economist from Pakistan. I, um, you know, I happened to be with him in in a meeting, and he made a remark on uh, on our uh, uh, you know flawed decision making that he said you know uh, we have uh, in the country. Um, you know, he said that you know instead of importing expensive roads and uh, expensive energy projects from from China, uh, we should have focused more on uh, you know importing. Uh, agriculture technologies and, and knowledge from China 
to boost our uh, you know local productivity. Uh, I will I was just uh, you know sent a link um, uh, by by a friend um, you know of of an article which appeared today on uh, in uh, in Dawn, uh, which basically uh, says that you know beginning of the end of cotton production in Pakistan, which which really uh, saddens me. Um, you know, apart from apart from the Lent and uh, our uh, uh, you know reliance on on cotton production, uh, you know, a, a major chunk of our exports are of textile and cotton cotton products and all. Um, almost 17.7, 17.8%, uh, you know, um, oil comes from uh, cotton seed oil. So if our production is going to decline from you know at at one point in time we used to produce 14 million bales and now. Uh, you know, this year the projections are that you know we'll be touching somewhere around seven billion, um, seven million bales. Uh, you know, it's I think it is all the more important to uh, sort of recalibrate our crop strategy, and uh, we need to redefine uh, the role of uh, you know niche crops and role of uh, uh, orphan crops, including you know oil crops and and pulses, uh, in view of the large area. Uh, planted by key crops like wheat, and Dr. Sabu rightly pointed out that you know we need to have vertical growth in in wheat uh, to make sure that you know some of the area can be vacated for uh, for uh, you know other niche crops. Um, so I think uh, it is great news that you know there are opportunities out there to collaborate with our Chinese friends. Uh, all we need to do is to uh, you know fix our policy and 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 regulatory uh, regimen uh, in the country. And uh, uh, also, uh, you know, send signals to uh, other technology providers, you know, global companies. And I'm sure uh, the way the, the industry is consolidating at this point in time, uh, the focus of uh, major global companies uh, is going to be on providing total agronomic solution to, to the customers. And, uh, um, you know, they're investing heavily on digital farming, on precision agriculture, and things like that. Uh, I think going forward uh, in a not very distant future, uh, they should be looking for local partners, uh, you know, uh, for, for seed business and all. And I think if we can have, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, local seed companies uh, who carry, a, you know, a progressive vision, a futuristic vision, uh, and, and then of course they're willing to invest in their research program, uh, they're willing to invest on their uh, uh, workforce to develop expertise and all. Uh, I think there is opportunity uh, there to collaborate with, with, with global companies as well. I think we should tap uh, both these areas, uh, our Chinese friends, uh, and as well as the global companies. And I think, uh, uh, you know, it is it is is just the right time to sort of recalibrate our crop strategy. Otherwise, we've already lost many opportunities in the past, and uh, uh, there'll be another opportunity to, opportunity lost if we don't tap uh, uh, this time around. Thank you, Mirza Sahib. Uh, Nadeem, are you there? Nadeem Mirza. Syngenta. Anyone from Syngenta? OK, uh, maybe uh, they have left. Uh, Fawad Shah. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, actually, uh, we, uh, we were uh, running over time uh, in 90 minutes uh, are long past, uh, but I'm grateful to our uh, uh, guest speakers who have really given a very, very thorough, uh, you know, uh, treatment to the subject and we have uh, uh, you know learned a lot and new opportunities as Mr. Saab said are knocking and uh, let's not waste it this time uh, and uh, particularly there is uh, not only professional uh, uh, arrangement which is open to us but also the political and strategic arrangement which is helpful so with these uh, few words uh, uh, I'm grateful to all of you for your presence and attendance uh, we will have a special lecture on the 10th uh, of November uh, by uh, World Food Prize uh, winner of the 2020, Professor Ratan Lal. Uh, the information is already out uh, in the social media. 
and you are all invited to attend the special lecture by Professor Ratan Lal on the World Science Day, uh, the 10th of November. Thank you.